Hello world, especially you folks from Waterbaugh, New Jersey. Some of you older ones will remember what I'm about to tell you about Hojo's and especially Weber's Diner there on the White Horse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. Now for me, maybe others, Hojo's was short-lived. Uh, it wasn't built there and oh, would you all say 60, 61? And it did surplant Weber's there for your trips home from the Friday or Saturday night dances over Audubon High School. And uh, of course we went there for the ice cream and whatever. <clears throat> but it wasn't a real big hangout. But I remember one particular night after the dance. Now I had a false front tooth. Now I still do, thanks to an accident I had. Uh, but I learned how to take it and flip it out on my tongue. So it came out rather easily. Well, I'm sitting in Hojo's one night and eating something, I think ice cream, and I got sick. All of a sudden, just got a flash of sick. So I go into the bathroom and uh, I threw up. And then I came back out feeling better and I started to eat again. I ate the ice cream and the coldness hit the top roof of my mouth where that plastic retainer or whatever you call it for the false tooth was because it was no more. I threw it up down the toilet and there I am with the vanity thing, no front tooth. Well, I was petrified. I was upset. So I, even though I'm what, seventh or eighth grade, I, I think at least seventh grade, I went crying all the way home, and I remember going in the house, Mommy, Mommy, I'm sorry, I threw up my tooth down the toilet. And they all laughed at me, because, you know, I knew they cost money, and I think the replacement for it was like $25, which was still to me a lot of money in those days. So I was all upset. Of course, I had to go through school for a week or so without that front tooth, and that really bothered me, not like it does today. But anyhow, that's my Hojo story, and I think Hojo's only lasted a few years and then became you, you people that have lived there your whole lives and know the history of that. Weber's, on the other hand, was the hangout. If you guys out there, especially you younger ones, have ever watched Happy Days, then that was Weber's sans the, the dancing but we had the little jukeboxes in the booths. You had to go in, you had to order something. Sometimes we'd all split a order of fries, whatever, but it was the place to go to find who was hanging out. It would be an older crowd, a younger crowd, it didn't matter. And we all kind of mixed together there on the, on the left-hand side, two or three booths there was kind of where we hung out. And uh, you'd meet up, uh, there and see what was going to go on the next day or as we got a little older who had a car and wanted to go out and jump in the car. I mean I can even remember certain nights there of Joe DeCiano wearing all his leather out there on the, the parking lot and me up there with Bob Donicky and Chris Gleason later on and um, when I came back from the Air Force uh, in 66 to bury my grandmother, I got back in at 1 o'clock in the morning. That's the first place I headed was up to Weber's Diner. But um, we would uh, hang out there, play the jukebox, play the latest sounds, hang out, just like Happy Days. There wasn't much difference except we weren't dancing. And you get a hamburger or whatever. Now, I had a couple of really, really neat nights up there. Um, they weren't nights though, they were like three, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, back when, no, oh, again, maybe 60, 61, I was running around with Chris Gleason and Bob Donicky. And they could, pro they could get out of their house rather easily at night, but I couldn't. I was pretty, pretty on a sh pretty short leash. But I remember one night, we had planned it. We were going to sneak out of the I, They were going to get me snuck out of my house at like 2 o'clock in the morning. We were going to go ice skating. 
And I lived on the second story. Well, my grandfather was a roofer. He had a, all these ladders out back. Well, these guys actually got one of the ladders, put it up to my window, and I climbed out my window down the ladder at like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And we went ice skating over on Cooper River. And we're on the ice. And I remember these ducks out there, and we start chasing the ducks. If we'd ever gone through the ice, nobody would ever found us. <clears throat> But after this little shenanigans, you know where we ended up. Weber's Diner, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, I don't know. And I'd sneak back into the house again, have no idea how, and never, nobody ever did find out about it. And, um, and my grandmother would come up, you know, at noon, look at him, he sleeps all night and he sleeps all day. Well, Grandma, you know, I was out all night. And... Over time, we did that again. We, we would go over to Philadelphia and chase the hookers around and go to those all-light night movies and then come back, go to Weber's Diner, and then get back in the house again. But um, Weber's have lots of fun memories. Uh, wasn't a girl pickup place. It was just kind of just, just, just like happy days. What else can I say? And hopefully over time, it's still been that kind of a place, but I have very very uh, cherished memories up there. One last memory from uh, Weber's Diner, and I'll put this to sleep. Jimmy Borden, I went to school with his sister, who I think has since died of, uh, uh, Linda Borden, who's since died of MS. But Jimmy was a couple years ahead of us. Well, I had gotten out of the, out of the Air Force in 1967, and where was I then? Hanging out in Weber's Diner. Well, I was still 20 years old, I couldn't drink. Jimmy, thank you very much for your draft card. That got me into a few bars for six months, especially the one in Oakland I used to hang out in up in 67 before I went back in the service and had some good times up there being one of the guys. And I remember the look on the, on the guy that, you know, that stood at the door checking your IDs the night of November 11th, 19... Uh, 67 when I walked in there with my regular ID. Yeah. Anyhow, that's my memories of Weber's Diner. Anybody else out there that has any, just let's get them out there, tweak somebody's memory, and we'll, we'll post some more. This is Gus from sunny downtown Oregon, Washington, saying bye now.